Two cash grabs fight this week to see which one's better. The Hobbit, Desolation of Smog versus Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part one. The nice thing about both of these franchises is an established cast has already been set up. Hobbit Desolation of Smog has some great carryovers like Gandalf and now Legolas. But Bilbo Baggins is the one that really stands out. He really shines in this one. He's also the only character that's shown a lot of growth since the first Hobbit film. Pun intended. Mini Viggo Mortensen's a strong character too, but he's always so pissed off. Crack a smile once in a while. I know it's tough times, but... There's of course a new set of characters introduced into Smog, one of which is Evangeline Lilly, who plays Tyreel. Wow, those names all run right off the tongue. It's really refreshing, especially in Lord of the Rings, not see a female character cry all the time. I'm looking at you, Liv. Hey, little Arwen Cub, I accidentally taped over the last season of Bridezilla's with the new info on the ring hunt. Uh, oh. <laughs> what a shock, you're crying. It's no wonder your last husband left you. Could I just get a word? Can I just... Can I... I want a divorce. My boy Legolas is back in full effect this time around. I have to say, I love how Peter Jackson has turned Legolas into kind of this badass skateboarding fighter. Uh, you may recall him sliding down a shield in the two towers. I think he does that a couple times actually. Anyway, he's Tony Hawk in these movies now. He 360 spin kills, he knife flips, he grinds, ollies, manuals, reverse cowgirls, all sorts of bad guys in this movie. Reverse cowgirls, I'm not sure I'm talking about skateboarding anymore. I am, I am. Potter has had a police academy's amount of time to establish characters. I'm not going to list the incredible amount of talent we have on the screen. Uh, from the Academy Award winners, just to the kids grown up into the roles. I can tell you this though, it outshines the Hobbits cast any day of the week. The film though mainly rests on the shoulders of Harry, Hermione, and Ron, and these actors have mastered their characters at this point. But god damn is every scene Alan Rickman in perfect. We have a few CGI characters that need to be mentioned as well. Smog the Dragon from The Hobbit is an incredible sight to see, and he's voiced to perfection by Benedict Cumberpatch. But as fantastic as that performance was, it's going to have a hard time going up against Dobby and his final stand in Deathly Hallows Part 1. Now, I've been known to let my emotions get the best of me from time to time on movie feuds, and just thinking about Dobby's uh, final breath and... Harry's arms on the beach. <laughs> Here they come! <laughs> Here they come. I could go on and on about all these great characters and the actors who portrayed them, but why don't I cash grab this shit too? Span this thing out over two, maybe three episodes? Yeah, I think I will. To be continued. Right now, let's move to story. This means bring up story, jackass. Both these films are basically bridges to the final installment. Jeff Bridges, if you must. Once people found out The Hobbit was going to be broken up into two films, people lost their shit. Then later when they found out it was going to be three films, they started eating their own faces. Deathly Hollows gets a bit more of a pass here because the book is like three times longer and there is a ton to cover. Although there does appear to be a fair amount of walking in this first installment. Lord of the Rings level walking. If you come with me a little further on the tour, we can see one of my favorite uh, pieces, which is a horcrux that's broken open. Uh, here we have the bodies of Harry and Hermione tangled into some sort of a sexual love perverse thing. Uh, Ron, of course, uh, crying in the corner looking at this. Now I've actually come here a good dozen times trying to find that one nip slip, but alas, I have yet to see Daniel Radcliffe's uh, chest. Although I do hear he appears naked in, a, in another film, so let's press on. Okay, let's press on. The big reason for the comparison between these two, 
I think it's obvious. Neither of them resolve. We're left with a lot of questions. We have no real subplots even getting resolved as, as far as I can recall. Without that resolution, we're left with two amazing movies that stop right before the finish line. There were some things that worked really well in both stories. We have the building of the Necromancer's army, the spider escape, and of course the big confrontation with Smog the Dragon. You will take nothing from me, Dwarf. We're hunting for Horcruxes, which take Harry and company outside of Hogwarts for once. We get a great polyjuice sequence to open things up, and we get a very touching dance sequence with Harry and Hermione that was added to the script that wasn't in the book. And you know what? I ate it up. I gobbled that shit up. Yum, 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 yum. With all that said, I'm going to go with a tie in this department, although I'm once again kind of pushing Potter's direction. This is a tough one for me. Smog has a ton of action. In fact, two thirds of this movie is all action. It also has one of my favorite fight sequences in any of the Hobbit slash Lord of the Rings films. And that's, of course, the barrel scene going down the river. Legolas hopping all over the place like a frog, shooting guys in the head, decapitation. And, of course, I eat decapitation up once again. Yum, 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 yum. Feed me. The time it must have taken for Jackson and co. to orchestrate that scene, it, I mean, it, I can't even think about it. I won't think about it. Damn you for making me, Jerry. You're fired. Get out. I, no, I don't need you. That's the thing. Is I, I, that is the thing. I don't need you. Here's where it's tough for me because Potter takes the less is more approach. Where Jackson has like eight set pieces of fights with spiders and a dragon and lions and tigers and bears. Harry Potter is very subdued. We have little bursts, little chunks of action, but nothing lasts more than a minute or two. And that's by design. It's more real. It's more intense because you're not seeing it constantly like you are in The Hobbit. Jackson wants to blow your mind wide open, and he succeeds. The scope of battles are huge, the facial animation on his CGI characters are impressive to say the least, and the overall tone is one of ah. ah. I'm once again staying neutral, there may be a little bit of leaning this way and that, I'm not really sure on this one, I'm the top from inception. Both these franchises have some of the most memorable music in the last decade. Hollows uses music in a very drab way. Hope is all but lost, and the orchestra conveys that. The Hobbit has a little more wiggle room since there's a range of emotions, but this also leads to some really corny shit. Like for instance, whenever Legolas enters the room, or hops on the side of a hill, Jackson feels the need to play that like hero music, that uproar, Usually it's accompanied by like a light hitting him in the face from the sky. Now some of you guys are going to accuse me of hitting the butter beer a little too hard and uh, you know that's fair to say but I'm actually brewing polyjuice potion in the back right now not, not butter beer. But I'm going to stand by it. I think Potter is just a bit better than Smog. Smog of course has got all the action and everything you want but I think Hollows is just a better film all around. Um, leave your comments below. Make your voice heard. And remember, more than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. That's right. Wait, what?